What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Movie Emporium spoiler filled discussion slash any explains of Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. This film is directed and written by Joannes Roberts. Now before we begin, if you like this channel, awesome, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell, top to final is coming next. If you like any of these videos, awesome, hit that like button as well as comedy below on any to watch, including this one. So as I always say, there will be spoiler stuff in this review, as well as any explains to this movie. I will go into non-spoiler stuff at the beginning, but just give you a word of warning as I always do. And so in a non-spoiler sense, a synopsis as well as a review, uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is in essence a welcome back to the franchise that we know and love, which is Resident Evil itself. Gone are the days of uh, Mila Jovovich and Paul W.S. Anderson. Uh, this movie, in its nutshell, is a reboot. It's a closer adaptation to what you know and love in the Resident Evil franchise. And that's all I'm going to give because uh, when I get into the nuts and bolts in my spoiler review, you're going to see why I didn't spoil anything. But just imagine this being a reimagining as well as a reboot containing Resident Evil. And so, as we know, with Resident Evil, especially when it comes to the film franchise, it is not well regarded or highly regarded for the most part. I think the first and second films are decent enough for what they are, which is video game movies. I think Mila Jovovich was trying in those two movies and just later on because of her husband just kind of went off the rails and we know where that whole entire story went, or at least it tried to. And it was nice to hear that they wanted to reboot this entire series. No longer we have Mila Jovovich as Alice. No longer we have Paul W.S. Anderson as the director. And they wanted to go back to the roots that was Resident Evil. But the problem is we saw the trailer and we know, if you know anything about what you saw in the trailer, the characters didn't really look like the characters you know and love. So that was a problem. And there was some weird storytelling elements and some weird looking things in this movie. And it just... It didn't look like it was going to be very successful. And some of the reviews came out and they weren't very positive on the movie. And honestly, I'm here to tell you, this movie is actually not that bad. I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was very entertaining. It has a lot of callbacks, a lot of Easter eggs to the franchise itself. I feel that every character in this movie is well represented. I think they're given enough to do. They're given enough... Um, uh, points to the characters that they're playing that they do a nice job with those characters I think the settings and backgrounds are more faithful to the series as a whole and I just think this movie is even though it's self-serious it still has fun with what it's doing it still tries to be something that we recognize and I think does a competent job with being a video game movie I think this is actually personally in my personal opinion maybe I went because I went with low expectations but I think this is one of the better video game adaptations I think this movie's fun I think it tries to be something and does it pretty successfully. I think, you know, the creatures and the what they're called zombies, but part of the T-Virus, are not that great looking. They're actually not that well done, but there is some callbacks that are really kind of interesting and fun, and they're at least trying. They're not going over the top and silly and using the director that is Paul W. Anderson, who's a very terrible director in his own right. This feels like Joannis Roberts really sat down with the, the company that, you know, created Resident Evil, Capcom, kind of mapped out what they wanted and just he's like i will put this here i will do this here and i will make it as faithful and as uh you know uh, well regarded for fans as i possibly can but taking some liberties here and there and so on and so forth so overall i thought the movie was just a fun time at the theaters i think it's entertaining i think it has a lot of great callbacks for fans and who love the series as a whole and i think it gets goofy when it needs to and i think it gets serious when it needs to but i think overall it's it's just a film that represents when somebody cares enough to make a film and when somebody puts passion into it they can actually create a decent film and so with that said that'll be my official non-spoiler take on this film i hope i didn't spoil anything for you but if you uh decide to stop here if you watch the movie come back definitely watch the rest of this video but uh with that said thank you so much and as always comment below on your official opinion of this film if you do see it but otherwise let's head into spoiler territory okay so here we go on the spoiler filled version of resident evil welcome to raccoon city which i really hate the title just call it resident evil just reboot it as resident evil um this movie like i said is a 
pretty faithful adaptation to the Resident Evil franchise. And what I mean by that is the characters in this movie reference and feel like the characters you know. So you have Leon S. Kennedy, who feels like Leon S. Kennedy, even though he's played in a very different fashion when it comes to the actor himself. You have Chris Redfield, Clara Redfield. You have Jill Valentine, Albert Wesker. And then uh, you have some other characters that pop up, like uh, Jill Trevor and Irons. You have, you know, some other characters, which I'm not sure are in the video game. It's been quite a while since I played the video game, but I remember the kind of outlining nature of the video games pretty well in a nutshell. And what this movie does, and what it actually does pretty successfully, is it takes the ability to mash up the first and second game and actually deliver a quality product. Now, with that said, I still kind of wish they would just focus on one game and then focus on another, maybe do a sequel of that. And so with this film, it starts out, as we know, uh, with Claire and Chris Redfield. They're in the orphanage. They're being basically experimented on by, of course, uh, William Birkin, who's played by Neil McDonough. Every time Neil McDonough's in a film, I worry a little bit, but he's perfectly all right here. And they have a moment where this character, I think is Jill Trevor, I think, is her name uh she is kind of befriending claire's character claire redfield's character as a child and there is something kind of kind of um held back that this character of jill trevor who looks like this has this character has like you see one eye but you also see the face which i think is actually in the video game but basically when they grow up chris redfield is in raccoon city raccoon city as part of the stars crew Jill, uh, claire redfield is coming back to town because she's learned some information about umbrella corporation basically uh going to, away from raccoon city which i think is in part two i can't remember there's a lot of jumbulation when it comes to this film of mixing different things and so on and so forth but they're destroying raccoon city as we know from the video games and in essence this is where we're introduced to leon s kennedy who is a rookie who basically is made fun of by his own police officers, but he is wet behind the ears. He's behind the desk of Raccoon City Police Department. Even though he looks very different from the video game, he has the tics, he has the way he holds his gun is very similar to what uh, Leon S. Kennedy does. He eventually wears the vest from Resident Evil 2, and he, of course, sticks with uh, Claire Redfield, which I believe she was in the second video game. And then on top of that, we have Albert Wesker, we have Jill Valentine, and we have Chris Redfield, as well as another character character named like like Ryan or something like that who are dispatched to find these two officers that were basically dispatched to go to the Spencer Mansion to figure out what exactly is going on so the stars crew goes to Spencer Mansion Claire Redfield and uh, Irons who's played by uh, Donna Loge and of course uh, Leonis Kennedy are back at the police station so therefore you're marrying to marrying two video games together kind of giving you a little bit of easter eggs of different things so the crew goes over there the hell helicopter crashes into the Spencer Mansion, which I thought it crashed into the police department, but whatever. Basically what this is, is about these crews trying to get back together, trying Claire trying to get back to her her brother and doing everything in their power so there's like you know easter eggs and there's moments for instance in uh, Resident Evil 2 that's in this movie there of course is the dog that we see in the underground uh, parking garage which there's many dogs in that Resident Evil 2 remake but you know what I'm talking about there's a reference to that there's a reference to the liquor that Leon S. Kennedy uh, finds in the police station which is actually at the orphanage which they you know they're marrying and marrying different things and so on and so forth there's the concept of like you know the fire in the police station and of course the uh, t-virus creatures the zombies as they're called attacking the of course the police station and so on and so forth there's no nemesis or no i'm sorry there's no mr x so that that is kind of taken out of the the form but they're doing enough to kind of reference the second video game which is really cool and so on and so forth so like i said we had the police vest we the, the station looks really cool and really authentic to the video game itself and then we have spencer mansion which actually looks pretty Pretty identical to Spencer Mansion with the little liberties and how they do everything. You know the way they angle the shots in the in, the, in this segment where sometimes they're like over the shoulder, they're down below, or they're to the side, or there's you know they're doing shotgun stuff and they're doing um, pistol work and stuff like that. That's like uh, muzzle flashing in the dark. Uh, one of the one of the T virus zombies or whatever actually looks up like the original zombie in the first game, which is a really cool reference. And of course there's some other stuff you know in the Spencer 
transformation that is, you know, you, you'll you either see it and miss it or that kind of good stuff. And they actually marry a little bit of Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil 3, I, I believe, or whatever. But the train sequence is in this movie where you're driving down the train. Uh, William Birkin's character, Neil McDonough character, has turned into a nemesis-like character. And you see him attack and you see, like, the eyeballs. And you see the point where you shoot the eyeballs and stuff like that. And it's really cool reference to the, to the video games. And, of course, they destroy with the... the with the with the, the rocket launcher which is a really cool reference and there's a lot of this stuff going on and, and then you have like leon s kennedy and claire and jill and chris and this young girl all escape from the mind as they blow up raccoon city so it leads off it basically ends where kind of like resident evil 2 and 1 all ended with the destruction of raccoon city even though there was no nuclear explosion and there's some like clue references it's basically leading to a part two at some point if this movie is successful which i think it'll make its money back because it's not it's a really low budget film for what it's worth but what's really what's really neat about this film is Wesker betrays the stars crew Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield escape the man or escape the police department the mansion of course is really cool to watch and look at and so on and so forth and those are just kind of references that are actually well done and well executed for what you're getting like i said the zombie the t-bar zombies aren't that great there's for instance uh when mr mr x actually takes the guy from the, the jail cell there's a guy in the jail cell that leon s kennedy comes across who dies who's actually part of the main plot there's just all those kinds of cool types of references in this game which are all kind of all over the place you know when you can do something as small is just how Leon Kennedy holds his gun up like this or how Jill I mean sorry Claire holds the the shotgun to how Chris Redfield has a very style to him with the um, you know the, the mustache and beard and those type of things are what makes movies like this kind of uh, nice to watch because they took a, take a lot of effort and put a lot of you know detail into what they're doing which is a really nice kind of aspect and it made me really appreciate this movie more than I should have because it really has bad dialogue but that's also what Resident Evil has it has bad dialogue it's cheesy over the top and silly so and then of course uh albert wesker is of course killed and he is actually brought back to life he can't see so we get the uh famous glasses that he puts on and of course we're introduced to ada wong in the end credit sequence and she'll be a big part i'm sure of the sequel and that's the end of the movie that's kind of it in a nutshell there's the there's the fire or the police station stuff there's the Spencer Mansion stuff. There's the Orphanage stuff. There's all these things that are referenced throughout the entire movie. There are big references to the video game. And then usually that wouldn't work. Like I said, if they had focused on a kind of horror show in the Spencer Mansion, kind of went ran with that, made it really close to the first game, I think it would have worked a lot better because the only issue about this movie is it's trying to focus so much into one hour and 40 minute movie that sometimes stuff gets lost in the in, in, off to the side and stuff like that so there are character developments that kind of go by the wayside and there's some moments with the the zombie and I mean, let's just call them zombies that kind of just doesn't make any sense and I don't know there's points in this like where the story structure just kind of starts falling apart and the William Birkin stuff is not that great and it just overall there's just it's your very typical horror video game tropes where stuff just doesn't really start making any sense and starts to get into some weird territory but i think overall i think it's just it, it just works as a film it just works as a, a reboot to the resident evil franchise and i liked where this film went i know a lot of people probably won't but i think overall i think it does um it does do a nice job of melding you know, a couple of video games it does a nice job of you know being trying to be as fan servicey as possible and i think it does it pretty successfully so um but with that said that's kind of where i'm gonna end it with my spoiler discussion and ending explains like i said the ending really is just them escaping raccoon city that happens in the video game of course but we're gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see where they go from there if they're gonna go into resident evil 4 stuff with the las plagas or they're gonna get into resident evil 3 with the nemesis all that good stuff We'll see what happens. Maybe Chris will punch a boulder or something. So, But that'll be it. That'll be my spoiler discussion slash ending explains of this movie, Resident Evil Rac Welcome to Raccoon City. Uh, in the comments below, if you played the video games or you know anything about the lore, how this stack up to you? Do you feel this was a faithful uh, adaptation? Did it do a nice job? If you hated it, tell me why you hated it. All that good stuff. Otherwise, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.